Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, March 13th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today, of course, Microsoft Patch Tuesday, and with that, we got 64 vulnerabilities being patched by Microsoft. Two of the vulnerabilities have already been exploited in the wild, and four vulnerabilities have been known prior to the patch being released. Both of the exploited vulnerabilities are in Win32K. These are privilege escalation vulnerabilities, and one in particular has been used together with a bug in Google Chrome in some targeted attacks. And this was the vulnerability I mentioned last week, where Chrome already released a patch for it, and now we got the corresponding Microsoft patch for the exploited vulnerabilities. The already publicly known vulnerabilities include an Active Directory elevation of privilege vulnerabilities, also a vulnerability in the NuGet Packet Manager. That actually could be sort of interesting. NuGet is uh, published uh, together with Visual Studio usually and uh, used to either retrieve or build uh, these NuGet packages. We also have a separate uh, code execution vulnerability in Visual Studio itself. And well, probably the last one I would consider the least important one here is a Windows denial of service vulnerability, but an attacker already has to have local access to the system. Among the 17 critical bugs that have been fixed here is again another DHCP client remote code execution vulnerability. These uh, of course are always interesting because all it takes is a user connecting to a DHCP server, which essentially you have to do if you are connecting to a public network. So uh, that's uh, kind of an interesting little new twist that we see a lot of vulnerabilities lately against DHCP clients. Now, as far as Adobe goes, uh, there things are a little bit uh, confusing here. We do have a reference uh, to an Adobe Flash update in Microsoft's patches, but on Adobe's security bulletin site, I only see an update for Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Digital Editions. Both updates are labeled as critical, meaning that they can be used to execute arbitrary code. However, Adobe assigned them a priority of three, meaning that actual exploitation is unlikely. So in short, where should you start? Well, definitely with the Microsoft patches, in particular those DHCP vulnerabilities. Uh, if you travel a lot, if you connect to networks you don't 100% trust, then certainly applying these patches should be a high priority for you. There are, again, a good number of scripting engine vulnerabilities being fixed uh, in this update, but uh, I'm pretty sure there are as many, if not more, still left to fix. And the 360 Total Security team has found a crypto miner warm, as they're calling it, a PS miner. A couple interesting things about this. First of all, it's a warm, meaning there is no central control. It just spreads and then, of course, mines crypto coins. Secondly, it's written in Go, a Go, Google's programming language, quite popular actually, and a little bit surprising that a worm is written in it, uh, given that it's not necessarily installed by default on all systems. But then again, uh, Go is kind of neat about its networking abilities. Maybe that's why they picked this language. And finally, uh, this particular worm is actually exploiting a number of different vulnerabilities. Elasticsearch, Hadoop, Redis, Spring, WebLogic, ThinkPHP, and SQL Server. So these are very commonly exploited vulnerabilities, and I guess they're trying to increase the number of possible targets by going after multiple vulnerabilities at the same time. As most crypto coin miners, it's going after Monero and not really sure yet how successful it is. None of the vulnerabilities that are being exploited are terribly new. The most recent one that's being exploited is a CVE 2018-1273. Some of the vulnerability that it's going for are going back to 2014. 
Given that this is a warm without any central command and control, they're using a static mining pool in order uh, to actually mine their coins. And it looks like so far, and uh, 360 Total Security is tracking it for about two weeks, they have accumulated uh, 0.9 Monero which is about $40 according to the current exchange rate for Monero. So the times where you could make like thousands of dollars per month are probably gone. And one thing that probably really helped Let's Encrypt the free certificate authority to take off is its ACME certificate management protocol, which well actually stands for Automatic Certificate Management Environment. This protocol has now been released as an RFC and a proposed standard. It's RFC 8555. So maybe we'll soon see it show up in more and more products. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening. No podcast tomorrow due to my travel schedule. So talk to you again on Friday. Bye.